just so you know, I, I mean, I told you I was going to play this song for you, and um, it's called Coming Back. It's the first song I ever wrote. Um, years ago, years ago, my wife and I were having struggles in our marriage, so much so that I walked out on her and the family. Just trying to be transparent for you guys. And I'll try and encapsulate the story here. So I just walked out. I was done. Now you have to understand, months prior, I was a minister traveling the country. And all of a sudden I just said, I'm done with it. I gave up on God. I gave up on the church. I gave up on my family. I just walked. And my life turned into a giant spiral. And it just crashed and burned. Um, through a praying wife and through God's call and for me always going in the house and my wife going God still has a call on your life um, so you know it's, it's just amazing what God did in our lives in our marriage and um, just in our family and so one of the things as we were going through restoration um, she called a bluff that I had and that was that um, I wanted to learn how to play guitar and I always thought, you know, the more I can say I want to play guitar, it's never really going to happen, but I can always complain about it. You know, I really wanted, so one Christmas she bought me a guitar and said, shut up. Yeah. Well, kind of, she didn't say it. She probably meant it though. But what was really neat about it is I, I you know, we were still going through some counseling and it wound up that the counselor says, be, you know, use it for some therapy, you know, do something. And so um, just God laid this song on my heart. And um, it was one of these things where, like, again, it was like, like, like I said, it was the first song I ever wrote. So. Seems like a long time ago, I ventured in the woods. The path looked so easy that I really felt I could. Drop all my armor and I laid it on the ground It got dark and cloudy, I didn't think it could be found But it's all coming back to me And I'm coming back to you Yes, it's all coming back to me and I'm coming back to you I lost my first love And I lost most of my friends Definitely I lost my mind My spirit couldn't bend Love of my lifetime She saw me walking out the door I'm not the man I was From all those years before Cause it's all coming back to me And I'm coming back to you Yes, it's all coming back to me And I'm coming back to you Oh God, be patient with me Renew, restore my heart you will give back to me things I dropped from the start I'm finding all my armor though it's tarnished, dented, and rusted Polish up my faith, belief in the one I can trust in Cause it's all coming back to me And I'm coming back to you Yes, it's all coming back to me And I'm coming back to you Seems like a long time ago I ventured in those woods So, that was that, so Thank you It's a great testimony I mean, if you guys ever have an opportunity and, you know Want to buy me a free coffee? I'll tell you the whole story, you know? All right, you don't have to. Dinner's fine. So. What? What'd you say? All right. So, 
So Steve and I, it's great to have Steve back. I'm so glad to have him back and his people are coming in. Again, you know, people are coming in. The class doesn't start until 7, but we wanted to start having some praise and worship. And, you know, the last couple of classes when we were doing the, uh, you know, how we got the Bible, you know, Steve and I just decided, let's do some praise and worship, you know. So we're excited about that. We have some songs, some of these songs we wound up doing on a prayer night a few weeks ago. And um, we're going to do them for you tonight. Hopefully you know them. Um, we've got... Dave in the back is going to throw our words up there. So, and um, feel free to sing along. Wait, before we get started, I do need you to at least, if I give a, a sentence, and Steve's going to be like really helping you guys out here. I'm going to say, in heavenly armor, we enter the land, and the echo is, the battle belongs to the Lord. Okay? So I need you guys, if you know the song, you can sing it, but I really want you to punch that line because that's a really cool thing because we want to know that the battle really does belong to the Lord. In heavenly armor we enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. When your enemy presses in, heart do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We'll do that first line. Hold on. In heavenly armor we enter the land. What? Very good. You guys did good. You were paying attention. All right. So, and just a reminder, if you are not, if you don't have a pamphlet, we have Jeff up here has the box of pamphlets. We did get a new stock in because we did run out last week. So. It should be a familiar song to some of you guys. We do it here. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Again, ready? This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. All right, yeah. I mean, sometimes we feel that way. We feel like everything's crashing in on us and we feel surrounded by all the bad. But what we need to realize is our next song is this. It, it, this is what we need to realize, that there's no weapon formed against us that will prosper. You know? And that's the thing. We have to remember that. You know, and it's one of the things, and, and I was, as I was going over the song, a couple other verses were coming to my mind. And, you know, when we think about that, if there's no weapon formed against us that can prosper, that can defeat us, that can go against us, we also have to remember the one familiar verse that we know, that if God is for us, then who can be against us? If God is for us, what? Who can be against okay. us? So here's the thing. So if we know that, and we know that, we know the other one, then we also remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is where? In the world. So anything that surrounds us, we get surrounded again by God. So yeah, so greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. So this song is called No Fe Weapon Formed Against Us, or No Weapon. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. All those who rise up against us shall fall. We are when I fear what the devil may bring me. I am a servant of God. I am a servant of God. Let's try it again. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. All those who rise up against me shall fall. I will not fear what the devil may bring me. I am a servant of God. Yeah, yeah, I am a servant of God. One more time. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. All those who rise up against me shall fall. I will not fear what the devil may bring me, for I am a servant of God. I am a servant of God. I'm going to give Dave the eye to change that song because it's going to blend right into this one. Ready? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's gonna do. The word in faith is my sword and shield. Jesus is Lord of the way I feel. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's gonna do. The word in faith is my sword and shield. Jesus is Lord of the way I feel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, 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 I don't care what the devil's going to do. Because his word and faith is my what? Sword and shield. And Jesus is the Lord of the way I feel. All right. So, I like that song. It's a fun song. And, you know, you, we don't have to, you know, sometimes we, when we think about battle, we get a little depressed. But when we know who the victor is, can't be, there's no need to be depressed. You know, we can get excited about it. So... All right, the last song I want to go over is a song that we did a couple nights, uh, a couple prayer nights back. I want you to think about this, and I want you to take this and make it your prayer. Last night, we had prayer night here, and it was really a great time to just be able to connect with God, connect with each other, pray for each other. And I know on Sunday, you know, Pastor Gary was sharing all about forgiveness and just how to be able to forgive people because it's not easy when you harbor something. And last night during prayer, you know, before he said, because we, we want to pray for everybody who has something against another brother. And, you know, a lot of times you think, oh, that's something major, you know. I, I, you know. But what he even said, he goes, even if you have the slightest of things, the slightest of things, you're still harboring something. You know, and I liken it to, you know, how many of you, and you've heard the term before, but how many people have ever gotten that little stone in your shoe? And how annoying that will be. You know, I know like, and you're sitting there and you go, I, I can walk with it. If I sh shake my foot enough, the stone will get up towards the toe. And it doesn't because it winds up rolling back under your foot and eventually you have to stop and do what? Take your shoe off and take the stone out. And that's what we have to do about forgiveness is that we need to go to the people. If somebody's offended, 
you need to go to somebody else and share with them and ask them, you know, say, hey, listen, you know, and deal with it. And you need to forgive them. Even if they don't want forgiveness, we are called to forgive. I mean, think about our Savior up on the cross who died for everybody's sin. He did not just say, those of you who accept it, he asked everybody. And he said, you know what? Everybody's covered. You know, everybody's equal at the foot of the cross. You accept him or you don't accept him, he still died for you. So what happens is, when we pray, we're fighting battles, okay? So this is, again, this is a song. I, I wrote this one a couple weeks ago. We used it um, at the prayer time a couple weeks ago. I'm fighting battles from my knees. 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 Helmet of salvation, I know who's the Lord. Shield of faith locks fiery darts away my spirit sword. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Press a plate of righteousness on my chest. Belt of truth and gospel shoes, no time to rest. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. The enemy is watching, he knows where we'll go wrong. But the word of God says, when I'm weak, you are strong. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Right, let's see that last verse ready. The enemy is watching, he knows where we'll go wrong. But the word of God says, when I'm weak, he is strong. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Are you fighting battles from your knees? All right. Okay. Um, <sighs> Well, I'm done. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I love, I love doing that. We're gonna get started, and we're gonna, uh, you know, I hope you guys all enjoyed last week. You know, as people are trickling in, you know, they'll get used to us starting at seven o'clock. They'll, they'll do that. So again, if you didn't get your pamphlet, you have Jeff up there has the pamphlets. If you ran out, they're there. And um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna get started with a word of prayer, and then we're gonna turn it over to uh, Brother Rodney. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you. We thank you that we can come to you on our knees and we can fight those battles. And we know that no matter what, that you are for us. So the world cannot be against us. They can try and they can fight against us, but we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So God, I just ask you to bless my brother Rodney as he comes up and teaches tonight. Uh, for those of you uh, who are listening, and just I just ask you to have the Holy Spirit just flood on you tonight to receive the words that Rodney's going to be sharing. As we start the, each piece of armor, God, we just pray that we will know the truth, and we know that the truth will set us free. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord and good evening. Good evening. Let's try that again. Praise the Lord and good evening. Good evening. Much better, much better, much better. King David said it best. I was so glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's start off by giving the Lord a hand clap of praise.
Amen, amen, amen. Last week, for those that missed last week, uh, my, can you hear me okay in the back? Am I too loud, too low? Everything's good? All right, all right. Just wave your hands, I'll talk a little louder. I can do that, you know. But um, uh, on a serious thing, last week, Pastor Steve gave us the background to the Apostle Paul, his, his Hebrew name Saul, the book of Ephesians, and the city of Ephesus. And he, with the parts of the armor were named as well. What we're going to do this week, we're going to get into the actual parts of the armor. I have sitting here to my left, your right, uh, the belt of truth. That's a kid's belt of truth. I, I, I give anybody a dollar if you can put it on. But um, that's the kid's belt of truth. God doesn't tell us what to do. He shows us by his own example first. We'll find ourselves tempted through the wiles or the schemes of the devil. We're going to get into that. Um, but Hebrews 4.15 lets us know that he was tempted at all points like we are, yet without sin. We may find ourselves without basic necessities or even without a home. In Matthew 8.20 we're told the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Will be hurt, persecuted, abandoned, lied on, used, abused, and thrown away. But your Savior in Matthew 27, 35 was nailed to a cross between two thieves outside of the city. He taught us forgiveness by his own example by saying in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he warns us in Romans 12, 19, not to take vengeance. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now in Isaiah 59, 17, God put on garments of vengeance for clothing. He wrapped himself in a zeal as a cloak as he went to bring about justice on our behalf. This is just a short sampling of all the things that our, our God does for us. And we'll get started with our first, and you're going to see this each, each class, our memory verse. And memory verse, because it's important to keep that. <coughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. That's about four or five lessons right there. From the beginning, Paul has drawn attention to the unseen world. Now he describes the spiritual battle that takes place in the heavenly places against evil. Our own strength is inadequate, but God's power is invincible. When we are weak, we are made strong through God. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> His grace is sufficient for us. The Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and he sought the Lord three times. To, uh, that the Lord would take that thorn away from him. That was the answer he was given. My grace is sufficient for you. You may be dealing with something right now. God's grace is sufficient for you. Now, in verse 11, you hear wiles. Wiles of the devil. What are they? Schemes. Shenanigans. They come decept in deceptively attractive forms, appealing to our flesh, rather than looking as repulsive and repugnant as they actually are. Put on the whole armor of God, we are told, we must be well armed that no part may be, of our body may be spiritually naked and exposed to the enemy. Ephesians 4.27 from the NIV says it this way, and do not give the devil a foothold. <clears throat> What we need to do is, first of all, we need to recognize we're in a spiritual battle. And God has prepared armor in advance for us. James 4, 7 tells us we are to resist the devil and he will flee from us. We are to resist the devil every time he comes at us. We are to repent of the territory that we have given up through sin. Joel 2, 25, you see, some of you may have seen this on television, the um, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. 
There is no makeover like an extreme makeover God edition. So what does the belt of truth mean? Almost everyone in those days wore some sort of long sheet or a light robe, typically as a heat-defeating undergarment, quite similar to what you would see in some Middle Eastern countries today. But if you were a soldier, this arrangement would present a problem. A long robe would make it very difficult for you to move quickly, you trip over your own robe, and make yourself easily grabbed by the enemy. So what the soldiers would do is take a belt and fasten all the excess fabric more tightly to their body. That's why the older translations of Ephesians 6.14 say, gird up your loins with the truth. What this belt did was free the soldiers' legs up to help them be ready for the fight, ready for action, as we have to be ready for action. This is established and cemented by the prophet Isaiah. The apostle Paul is not only drawing on Roman armor, but on Christ as the fulfillment of the prophecy of the divine warrior who came to rescue God's people. Truth has stumbled into public squares, and uprightness cannot enter in. The truth is lacking. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him. Then his own arm brought him salvation. He put on righteousness as a breastplate, a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak, according to Isaiah 59, 14 through 17. Truth had stumbled in the public squares. Truth was lacking. The Lord's answer was the Messiah. His answer was Jesus. So the truth and belt of truth is Christ himself. According to Ephesians 4.21 and Isaiah 59, 14-17, now we understand that the truth here refers to Christ and all the truth he embodies. What do we actually do to put this armor on? <clears throat> it goes to the final say. Who has the final say in our lives? When it comes to decisions I'm making, to how I navigate relationships, to how I parent, to how I work, to how I worship and believe, who or what has the final say? Is it my feelings? Is it a person? Is it culture? Is it comfort? The belt of truth in one sentence. Give Christ the final say in our lives. having your loins girt about with the truth. <clears throat> the Greek or the Latin term for this belt is called, now you have to excuse my pronunciation, syncolum multiar. Syncolum multiar, a studded leather belt worn by Roman soldiers. This belt served two purposes. It was utilitarian in that it housed the uh, sword and dagger and also with those little uh, plates on there, it also offered a protection factor against enemy fire. Your modern day uh, uh, military law enforcement, they use body armor. And um, this stuff had to, had to do two things at, at once. Now, if you have, say, an old school marble top from a, from a table, that'll stop some enemy fire, but can you run carrying heavy marble? No, no. No, so it's got to be lightweight enough to allow for movement, but heavy enough to offer a protection factor. See, in our lives, man was not made for religion, amen? You see, religion is man's way to get to God. The Word of God and the living Word, who is who? Jesus Christ. That's God's way to get to man. I don't know anybody who was saved based on facts and information. I got saved when I got to the end of myself, and I was at the beginning of his self. That's me. The belt of truth was named after the leather belt with an apron that hung in front of the Roman soldier's groin and lower abdomen, as, as we just explained, and the small brass plates were attached to the apron to provide the greatest possible protection.
When preparing for battle, the belt would have been the first piece of protective equipment put on. One of the verses, I've asked a few people to do some reading, we'll come to those a little bit later, but one of the verses talks about uh, when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt and they took that Passover meal that night and it says in there they had sandals on their feet, a belt on their waist, their staff in their hand, ready to go, ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. The application of the bell is Jesus is the truth. The bell is a reminder that Jesus is the foundation for spiritual battle. He is the truth that stands against the lies and the deceptions of Satan. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, according to John 14, 6. The belt was used to tie up garments so they would not get in the way while fighting. It clung closely to a soldier's body and shielded some of the most vulnerable parts of his body. What does truth do? Truth, truth keeps us from giving in to the world's beliefs and actions. Compare our beliefs and our actions to that of the Word of God. Can you lay your life beside the Word of God and we see the same image? Are we seeing two images? Or are they beginning to align? I would suggest, hopefully, prayerfully, with a lot of us, they are beginning to align. Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. But 11 years ago, I was running two small groups, and one of the people in there had said to me, Oh my God, Rod, you put so much on us. I don't put nothing on you. The, the, the Word of God puts it on you. But you see, that's a warning against trying to, uh, uh, trying to serve the Lord without the Holy Spirit. There's a story in Acts about uh, someone, and they were asked, have you had the Holy Spirit, have you seen the Holy Spirit since you believe? And the person said, well, we, we don't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. And see, the Holy Spirit is the enabler, the, the, the paraclete, the one that comes alongside, that makes learning, makes living, teaching, and living, living for God easy. But see, with man, this is impossible. With God, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the bell calls one to be prepared, to be ready for action. The call to have your loins girt about with the truth is a call to be prepared. Christians always need to be ready to defend themselves against the powers of darkness and not be caught unaware. Uh, one scripture I forgot to uh, call to your attention um, you know, and along with renewing of the mind, is that God lets us, because a lot of times we say things like, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. But see, the Lord works according to his will, plan, purpose. And the Lord won't tell you anything that his word does not verify. Just remember that. The Lord will not tell you to do anything his word does not verify. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says it this way, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. But we can be and are called to be Christ-like. Now, uh, you see up there it says ready for action. Uh, we're going to do some work here. Um, I'm, I'm a product of the 70s. There was a sitcom in the 70s called WKRP in Cincinnati. Has anybody ever heard of that? <laughs> amen, amen, a whole lot of you. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to tune our station to WORK at Calvary Chapel, meaning we're going to go to work. Uh, I asked somebody to read Matthew 24 and 44. Would you uh, read that at this time? The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I was also in the military, and those of you in the military, what are we doing? Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. Always be ready. <laughs> Always be ready. Something happened to the sound there. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. We all are all right? Okay. Okay. Exodus 12 and 11. Yep, that's me. And thus shall ye with your loins girded, 
your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Amen, amen. They're ready to get on up out of Egypt in ready mode. The next one is, um, somebody, if you would, I didn't sign this one. Take Luke 12 and 35. Anyone? Depends on what Bible. They got a good Bible or a cheap Bible. He dressed for service and well prepared. Amen, amen. I, I, from the New King James says, your waist girded and your lamps burning. I like that. Because that, 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 brings to, that brings to mind what happened with the five wise and the five foolish virgins. You know the story. Uh, the five wise were, had oil. They just had to get up and trim their lamps and they were ready to go. The foolish go to the wise, hey, give us some of your oil. And the wise said, no, 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 no. Then there will be enough for none of us. Go out and, and go to the people who sell oil. But on the way out, they met the very one that they were supposed to be prepared for. And then the wise were taken in. The foolish, were, the door was shut. The foolish let us in. What were they told? I don't know you. Now, they all have a couple things in common. First of all, oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Uh, they were all virgins. Now, the context is not a sexual thing, please, now. So, so we get that out of the way. Uh, but the context of virgin means they were all believers. Some are ready, some are not. Believers right now in this time, some are ready, some are not. But we all need to get ready because you look around us, this is spiritual. And now, now we go a verse down from our memory verses, about a verse or two down, it says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Pastor Gary was teaching on forgiveness and restoration yesterday. And I actually, I actually learned that. Now, I learned how to forgive, but the restoration part, the rest of, a lot of times we just like deal with things, just put them away and just deal, get over whatever. You know, it's the restoration part. And, um, you know, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. See, flesh and blood is what you see, is what the enemy wants you to see. But, you know, the enemy use you against me, or use me against Pastor Steve, or use Pastor Steve against Pastor Gary. That's, that's what the enemy wants us to divide. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. 1 Peter 3.15 lets us know that we need to know the good news about Jesus and be able to explain why you believe in him. And to do it, the older translations say with meekness and fear, some of the more modern translations say with gentleness and respect, they mean the same thing. But uh, to be able to explain to a person why you believe what you believe, because I can tell you, in your neighborhoods and the places you go and work and whatever, you know, people, people see something, they should see something different in you. Something should, something should be different about you. You can be prepared in every circumstance by making certain that you're a person of truth. This includes knowing the good news about Jesus and explaining why you believe in him. <clears throat> Living as a person of integrity, as someone who is honest and trustworthy, Matthew 5, 37 says, but let your yes be yes, and your no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Now, um, as far as knowing the gospel, knowing the Lord, that's knowing him in the pardoning and the forgiveness of your sins. Romans 10, 9 and following says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. For with the heart of man believe on the righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Christian has been saved from the guilt and the penalty of sin. According to Luke 7.50, 1 Corinthians 1.18, 2 Corinthians 2.15, Ephesians 2, 5 through 10, and by the way, that Ephesians 1 will come up in some of our lessons, the 8th and 9th verse, and 2 Timothy 1.9. So you have been saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. The Christian is being saved from the habit and the dominion of sin. Believers are not sinless. They should sin less. 
According to Romans 6.14, Romans 8.2, 2 Corinthians 3.18, and there, there are others, I can give them to you, uh, at a, at a, you know, if you want them, just let me know. The Christian will be saved at the Lord's return from all bodily infirmities that are the result of sin and God's curse upon the sinful world. According to Romans 8.18-23 8, and 1 Corinthians 15.42-44. So you have your perfect healing in eternity. So if you don't get healed here in time, you have your perfect healing in eternity. It is significant that the belt of truth clung to the most vulnerable parts of the soldier's body. The belt of truth reminds contemporary Christians that God calls us to be truthful at the deepest and most intimate levels of our lives. King David wrote in the 51st Psalm that said his prayer of repentance. Surely you desire truth in the inward parts. You see, God judges the secrets of our hearts. The secrets of our hearts. Living as a person of integrity, again, being honest, humble, and in right standing with God. 1 Peter 2.12 says, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. I have an interesting uh, uh, testimony on that. Um, about 15 years, we lived in our former neighborhood 25 years. Uh, we've been out of there for about two years. But about 15 years ago, I, I picked up a new neighbor, and they had a favorite pastime, accusing me of wrong of things I didn't do. So anyway, I'm a regular watcher of forensic files. One of the things one of the investigators said, through an investigation, the clean get cleaner and the dirty get dirtier. Well, guess what? As this thing went on, all the police calls and we ended up in and out of court, I got cleaner, she got dirtier. Till one day, about two years in, I was not home, I was out working. Liz was outside, she approached Liz and said, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done to you. And, and I was praying throughout the whole time and um, inside, you know what was going on on the inside, but on the outside, Lord, Lord, Lord. And you know, the Lord used the smile, he used that, he sent what the enemy meant for evil and he used for good. Proverbs 14, 12 lets us know there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end are the ways of death. And, it, you know, everybody, oh, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. But Jesus told us in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands. If you love me, you'll do what I said. He asked Peter three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? One time he's told, feed my sheep. One time he's told, feed my lambs. I'm a little concerned about the person who loves the Lord and doesn't do what he said. And he, you know, he gave us the record here. Philippians 2. Somebody go to Philippians 2, verses 5 through 13, if you would. One of the most important salvation texts in the Bible. Did you read it, Robert? Yes. Let this Is mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of, of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth 
and those under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do the do good, do for his good pleasure. Amen, amen. I like that one. Uh, I just want to throw that out there. Uh, work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean, anybody? What does that mean to you? What does that say to you? Reverence. Reverential. Amen, amen. Anybody else? It basically means to put your salvation in operation mode. Um, yeah, put your salvation in operation mode. To as 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 with your car, put it in operations mode. Amen. We're gonna do something here real quick. I, um, we're gonna we're gonna take a break. We're gonna take about a ten minute break, and then we're gonna come back. Uh, it's now seven twenty nine. Come back about seven forty. Welcome back. Um, Luke 750, if somebody would, please. Just uh, turn to that and then read it for us nice and loud. Steve, should we give him a mic? Yes. Yeah. Yes. If they could be real loud, that would be great. Because, you know, as long as everybody can hear you, that'd be good. Luke 750. If you're ready, go ahead. Gotta be loud, though. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Thank you, because that brings me to one, uh, Ephesians 2. Somebody go 8 to 10, Ephesians 2. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen, amen. Now, by grace you are saved through faith. Now, uh, some may say well, works has nothing to do with it. No, works does have something to do with it. But the problem is religion gets it all wrong. You see, salvation should bring about good works. Good works are the overflow that you have been saved. Uh, James says it this way, uh, you have uh, uh, faith but no works. I will show you my faith by my works. And then... You take Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is a famous text, but you know what? You can't have it without 10. Eddie, could you read 10 again? Just 2.10. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You know, uh, in my studies, I found where, you know what that verse is saying? We are God's work of art. We are his work of art. He created us for good works. I had uh, a handful of meetings with Pastor Gary over the last few months, and, and one thing came up, the thing about, about works. He said, as he put to me, you know, if somebody says they have faith and they don't have any works, I would question that, and I would question that too. We are God's work of art. He created us in our image after what? In his, no, in his image after his likeness. Amen, amen. 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18, yes. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen, amen. 
The gospel is foolishness to the man who is perishing. 2 Corinthians 2.15 We are a sweet savor to Christ. Remember the tabernacle, that smokestack in the middle, and then when the high priest went in uh, uh, to to do the sacrifice, that smoke represents the, the prayers of God's people going up to Him as a sweet smelling savor, and that's what we want: our prayers to go up as a sweet smelling savor, not as a putrid stench. And that's important. That's important. 2 Timothy 1 9. Alright. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which has given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Amen. Amen. It's nothing we did, but it's everything He did. The Christian is being saved from the habit and the dominion of sin. I've talked to many of you in here. I've, people have told me, you know, Rod, God took alcohol right out of my mouth. He took drugs right away from me. He took pornography from me and, and along a host of other other issues. But he will do that. He's like that, you know. Um, Romans 6.14. And, you know, as, as I call out these verses, if you want to uh, chime in, comment, or anything, this is this, this can be a dialogue. Just raise your hand. But uh, next one is going to be Romans 6.14. Which then shall not have dominion over you, when you are not under the law, but under you are not under the law, but under grace. <clears throat> There's a context to that. Because I've heard people say, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. Because some in some churches, and I think Pastor Gary even touched this, where some people believe the Old Testament is invalid. The Old Testament is not invalid. The New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old. If you want an understanding of a New Testament scripture, go to the Old Testament. I learned this because, uh, like I said, I've been saved 20 years, been dealing with the armor of God ever since. I was drawn to it. This and Revelation, I, I, was, I was drawn to. But um, one of the things in the process of doing this, I, I, I said to, in the prayer last night, God has revealed this armor in ways I've never seen it since uh, I've been you know, called to do this. But um, this another person I was writing back and forth the other day, they found something in Kings. You know, you can find throughout, I mean, you know, the thing is to dig. And when you dig and search, God will always give you more than what you came for. I can say that because I'm a digger. I'm a digger the dog when it comes to the scriptures. You, you know, um, uh, my, my former bishop used to say some people are front-end loaders and some are dump trucks. See, a front-end loader does its own digging. A dump truck hauls away everybody else's load. Uh, Romans, oh, I know what I started to say. Concerning the armor of God, you heard that uh, Isaiah 59, 14 through 17, where God put on the armor, and it's, and, and it's called the armor of God. Why? Because he put it on first. He put it on first to ensure that it was a good fit for us. What day were we created in creation? The sixth day. That's why I said four. You gotta stay after school. No, I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing. But uh, no, we we were created on the sixth day, and what did God do on the seventh? He rested. Guess what that means? Everything we'd ever need was already here before we got here. Uh, one of my mentors had, had told me, he said, "Rod, God don't give you what you want. He give you what you need." But you know what I learned? I learned that He'll train you to want what you need and be happy about it. Because the more we congeal with God, the more we start to think like he thinks, start to want what he wants, desire what he desires. Because initially, 
We're like this with God. We're at odds with God because of sin. Sin entered the garden. That's where the separation began. And we look out at society right now. I mean, we have divided ourselves. We come up with new and innovative ways to separate ourselves. But, you know, we all created in one blood, in one baptism. There is one faith, one God over all, who is in all, through all, and in you all. But we find new and innovative ways to divide ourselves. Now we got two Repub uh, we got two polit major political parties in this country. Israel, I, I mean, there's too many to count. And, 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 and but see, anyway, the point I'm making there is that, and then just take, let's go to the church. We have more than 400 denominations. There's denominations within denomination. I used to be Baptist. I was talking, I had an inside joke with Pastor Steve and Pastor Gary. I said, you know, guys, I'm a recovering Baptist. <laughs> and they said they are too. Okay, okay, okay. The Baptist denomination, there's at least that I can recall six or seven under that banner. Pentecostal, forget about it. I don't want to go much further than that because if I go much further than that, I'm going out of the book. But uh, I, I, I'm going to get in trouble on that one. Uh, but um, let's go to Rome. Remember, we're still under the Christian is being saved from the habit and the dominion of sin. Let's go to Romans 8 2 next. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Amen. We are not under the law, but under grace. And grace, when you understand in context, it's a higher law. Amen. Why? You have the Holy Spirit. Uh, a name that I kind of uh, uh, use to describe the Holy Spirit is the early warning guidance system. Because, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, newsflash, I've sinned since I've been a believer. Is anybody else? <laughs> Okay, we you sin since you've been a believer now. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But every time I've ever sinned, I was warned ahead of time. I was warned ahead of time. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Be our next one. Second Corinthians 3.18 But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. I like that one line there. I like from glory to glory. I like that. Galatians 2.19 and 20 See, we really are in station uh, uh, WORK, aren't we? For I to the law and began to the law, that as I did unto God, I am crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen, I amen. I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What that means, he became a sin offering. And I have Philippians 1. No. No, I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, go ahead. Philippians 1, 12 and 13. I thought I had it, but I didn't. Philippians 1, 12 and 13. Know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become every evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. Amen, amen. 
Philippians 1.19 says, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The next section is the Christian will be saved at the Lord's return from all bodily infirmities that are a result of sin and God's curse upon the sinful world. Just so we know that um, um, as a believer, you you don't go to the judgment on sin. What judgment do you go through? Go to the judgment seat of Christ, the beam of judgment for rewards and blessings. You are judged on your post-salvation works. Is anybody glad you're not going to be judged on your sins? Amen. Amen. There's not enough animals anywhere. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, thank God for that. It is in the sea of forgetfulness. He casts it in the sea of forgetfulness and remembers it no more. And this is not in the Bible, but he basically tells us no fishing allowed. Because you bring up somebody else's dirt, yours liable will come up. So, <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, Philippians 1, 9, oh, I read Philippians 1, 9, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2, 13. So we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Amen. Romans 8, 18 through 23. sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown to dishonor it is raised in glory it is shown in weakness it is raised in power it is shown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body anybody looking forward to your what the glorified body what you need here amen amen a lady from my uh, former church years ago, she has passed on, so I guess she's got hers now. But she said, I'm going to be a size six in heaven. I said, oh, I think you're going to be a size zero. I, mean, you, I don't know women's sizes, but I think, uh, you know, zero is probably. Amen. I heard that. I take it. I take it. Um, but what I want to do at this time, I want to uh, bring the Steve and Steve Quartet back up. The. Uh, um, uh, the Calvary Mass Choir, I want to bring them back up, and I do thank you, and I will come back when they're done for one more thing, like Columbo, one more thing. One of the things, and I was, and I was reading through scripture, and um, as you guys were going through verses, what I love, and it's a verse that I, I love to use, um, it's in Proverbs, and it says, for us to learn to buy the truth and sell it not. And when you think about that, what that is saying to us is get the truth and don't let go of it. You know, so many people, I mean, we've seen people walking away from God that they knew the truth and they let it go. 
And for us, we have to remember, you know, we, we can't. You know, and just because the world doesn't accept the truth doesn't mean there isn't truth. And truth is not relative. It's not relative. Truth is truth. And the truth we know is Jesus Christ because he said he is the what? The way, the truth, and the life. Can't go wrong with that. Wow, I just got the start. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees again. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Helmet of salvation, I know who is Lord. Shield of faith, box of fiery darts, wave my spirit sword. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Breastplate of righteousness on my chest. Belt of truth and gospel shoes, no time to rest. I'm fighting battles from my knees. I'm fighting battles from my knees. Hold on a second. I'm just curious here. How many people are fighting battles? And we don't, you know, we don't have to know, you know, what's going on exactly with your battles, but we're all fighting battles. Each and every one of us fighting a battle. And what I want to see, I want to take a couple seconds at least to just pray. You know, I, it, it's, it's great to sit here and go, I'm fighting battles for my knees. But we just saw a show of hands of people who were saying, we are fighting battles. I, I mean, this might seem a little crazy. And I know not, I mean, not everybody comes out to the prayer night. But I'd encourage you to come out to a prayer night. But what I'd like to see tonight okay. is if you, if you just indulge me is that you pray with the person next to you and let them know that you are fighting a battle and also i want you to pray and say and tell them say listen you know what i'm going to pray for your battle you don't have to tell them what the battle is but we need to know that we're fighting for each other and that we're praying on our knees that we are battling for each other and i'll tell you the same thing we are battling and fighting for this church they have so many people. This church has, you know, three services, 8, 9, 30, and 11, 15, where people are all, I mean, really, if I was to ask each one of those services how many people are fighting battles, again, you'd see the same show of hands. Hands would go up because we're all fighting battles. So what I want to do, I just want to stop for a second. I mean, you and I can sing softly through this, but what I'd like to encourage you to do is to find somebody and just pray with them. If you, came by your, if you came by yourself, find somebody that you could pray with. If you see somebody sitting by themselves and you feel comfortable enough to go over and pray with them, I encourage you to go over and just say, hey, can I pray with you? Okay? We're going to just take some time and do that. <clears throat> Again, you don't have to share what your battle is unless you want to. But I want all of us to know that we are fighting for each other. We're fighting battles on our knees. We're fighting battles on our knees. We're fighting battles on our knees. We're fighting battles on our knees.
I just want you to say it as loud as you can and then just say, what I'll do is like, thank you, God, for winning my battle of, and you fill in the blank, okay? Thank you, God, for winning my battle with blank, and you fill it in, okay? One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. Bondage of self. Did I hear somebody say self? Bondage of self. Bondage of self. Wow, that was awesome. You guys did good. It was, was not an orchestra. I never, you know, would never have you guys come up. So, um, thank you. We've had a great night. We'll have Brother Rodney come back up and close us out. But, guys, this week, make sure you fight your battles from your knees. And know that we're fighting for each other. Okay? Um, if you feel comfortable, ask somebody to pray for you this week. And catch up with us next week. Okay? Next week, we're going to be talking about the breastplate of righteousness. That's a challenge to be righteous. There's only one righteous. All right? I think it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good uh, prospect that everyone is, but I tell you, I don't want to take for granted that everybody in here knows the Lord. And I, just, I just want to read something to you uh, from Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read from 8, verse 8 down. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As I said before, you know, we have found new and innovative ways to divide ourselves. Democrat, Republican, black, white, conservative, liberal. Socialist, and then the list goes on and on and on. Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, Roman Catholic, Methodist, uh, Presbyterian. We have found so many ways to divide ourselves. But that last line, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're going to wrap up, but I'm going to stay up here for a few minutes after we do the closing, after I do the closing prayer. But if anyone here is not sure about your salvation, I want you to come see me. Because uh, uh, please, if you're not, don't walk out of here the same way you walked in here. And I plead with you on that one. I know when I was led to Christ early in the month of August in 99, I was in church leadership for a lot of years before I came here. And, uh, you know, Calvary Chapel is the best thing to happen to my wife Liz and I. I just love it here. I really just love it here. been here about a year. And uh, uh, but but it, 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 but I, we just just love it here. We we just love it here. But anyway, when I was led to the Lord, the person told me. They said, "Don't you change one thing? Don't you change nothing? Because if you change something, you can go back. Let the Lord take it away." And I didn't understand that because if you're okay, uh, um, if us men, my us men, we always have to be in control. We always have to. I mean. And God created us to be protectors and providers. So some of that is built into us. But one of the things, God created a God-sized hole in us. Another thing I was delivered from was materialism. Because I was twice bankrupt, once foreclosed. I have good credit now in a beautiful home. And two beautiful automobiles. To God be the glory. I couldn't have done that on my own. He did that. But here again, in, in emptiness trying to fill. Uh, you know, early on I heard uh, Dr. Charles Stanley say that if everyone on the planet was working in concert to meet your needs, everyone, it still wouldn't be enough. God created us with a God-sized hole in us that only He can fill. Has anyone here just raise your hand if you have come to God and you have found fulfillment? I got both hands up, and I see hands all over the sanctuary. So I'm going to pray with you. Dear Emily and Grace.
gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we have had to come into your house, into your sanctuary, to go through your word. I pray, Lord, that all things were handled decently and orderly. We sure did try. But, Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. And I just pray right now, as, as this is being recorded and this is going out, that if anyone under the sound of my voice, either in this room or through this recording, throughout the world, hears this message and feels you on the inside drawing them to salvation, I pray, Lord, that you will touch their heart. You will speak to them, that, that you will let them know they have to believe you are the Son of God. Admit that they are a sinner. Repent of their sins. Ask them, ask you to come into their heart and save their soul. And I pray, Lord, that if anyone even right now, or even as I'm speaking, has done that, that you would send the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of them, that you would guide them and lead them all the days of their lives, that you would raise them up in their communities. Lift them up, Lord. Lift them up as witnesses to how good you are. Oh, God, you so you, you are just so good. You're so awesome. You're so wonderful. And, and we thank you that the Holy Spirit comes in to teach us your word, your will, and your way. Bless your people, Lord. Bless all those who would come, become your people. And we ask travel and mercy. And as we leave here, but never from your presence, let your peace, love, and protection ride with us, go with us, go out ahead of us, stay behind us, over us, under us, and in us. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, everybody.